Hello and welcome to another episode of the Copy Break Harp. I'm Zuzanna, I am a harp teacher and this is my weekly series for anyone who wants to learn more about playing the harp. Today I'm going to talk about the challenges that you may encounter when reading music on the harp and which can sometimes slow you down. If you feel that often the only reason why you stop playing is because you lost your place on the page or reading music in general is taking some time for new pieces, this episode is for you. If you follow the link in the description of this video, you can download a PDF and a transcript for today's episode. Today you'll find there some great exercises, so do make sure to download the extra materials. And now, back to today's topic. What can you do to read music faster, save some more practice time and make following the score easier? Let's get started! The position of the music stand can sometimes make things a little bit more difficult than needed. While playing the harp, you will need your gaze to move very often between the strings and the music. The shorter the distance between the two, the easier you will find the whole process. So try to experiment with where you place your music stand. The two things you want to check about are the height and the position of the music stand on the floor. Let's start with the height. You may want to bring your music stand up a little bit to the level where the music is roughly at the same height as your eyes are when looking at your fingers on the strings. This shortens the distance between the strings and the music and means that you don't have to move your eyes and head as much between the two. A quick remark here, when you play in a group you may want to lower your music stand a little bit so you can see above it and look at the other players and also the leader or conductor if you have one. But when you're on your own and especially if reading music is something relatively new to you, make things as comfortable as possible for yourself. After adjusting the height, try playing a bit with where you place your music stand on the floor. Usually the biggest challenge here is navigating the legs of the stand around the base of the harp. So you may want to experiment with perhaps adjusting the legs length so the stand doesn't take as much of the floor space. Here you need to make sure that the music stand is always stable so you don't risk it collapsing and falling on your harp. Once you've made sure about that, you can then try adjusting the position of the legs and where the stand is on the floor so it suits you best. Finally, check if the music stand doesn't get in your harp's way when you're playing. Slowly bring the harp to yourself and put again on the floor to check if this path is clear of any obstructions. Music is full of various patterns, which are certain repeated ways of writing melodies, rhythms, left-hand accompaniments, and when you learn how to spot these different patterns, your life will become a lot easier. Patterns are one of my favorite topics, and if you're interested to learn more about them, you can check out the links to some more of my materials that I have put in the description of this video. Today, we will look at some of the most basic patterns. If you're just starting out reading music, you will be looking for the smaller patterns that are easier to spot, which are repeated notes and steps. I recommend that you have a quick look at your music before you even play anything and try to find some of these, because this can save you quite a bit of time. When you can see that a certain note is repeated a few times, then you only have to read it once and then play the same string however many times is needed. Sometimes the repeated notes can be separated by other sounds, for example C, E, C. But when you realize that after a jump you come back to the same string, that's a win for you. Same with steps. When you see that the notes are filling every line and space on their way up or down the stave, you can then send the signal to your fingers to play every string on their way. This means that you also don't have to read all the notes in this section one by one, again saving you tons of time. Now that you can see your basic patterns, the repeated notes and the steps, it's time to put some trust in your hands to be able to play them without you necessarily having to look at your fingers all the time. This will give you more freedom to follow the music that you've got on your music stand and save the previously lost time when you may have been losing your place on the page and had to start all over again from the beginning. I'll give you some quick exercises so you can get the feeling of how you can trust your hands. 
Just a quick remark before we start. As you can see, my music stand is not at my eye level and it's definitely not as close to the harp as it could be. This is only because while I'm making this video, I want to make sure that you see as much of my hands and strings as possible. Normally my music stand is quite a bit closer to the harp. But anyway, let's move on to the exercises and let's start with playing some repeated notes with your second finger. I'll start on the middle C, because why not? If you want to be really sure that your finger comes back to the exact same string, you can use your thumb to hold on to one of the strings above, for example D or E, to make it easier for your hand to stay in the same place. By the way, this is a really nice warm-up exercise. You can start practicing this with one hand at a time, left or right. Or you can try doing both hands together. While playing, you can either close your eyes, look away from the harp or, best option, look at the music for this exercise on your music stand that you will find in today's lesson PDF. If you can practice while following the music, that's great, because then you're practicing exactly the skills that you need. Once you're all good repeating the middle C this way, you can let go of the thumb and repeat this pattern a few more times while staying close to the strings. Check where you are before you start. How does it feel, having your hand doing what you want without you looking? I hope it feels good. Now let's move on to the next step, or steps, because that's what we will do next. We will start again from the middle C and we will go up the harp with the second finger, playing each string on our way up to the C an octave higher, like this. When doing this for the first time, feel free to look at the harp to check where you are. As you're looking, also try to keep some mental space for feeling how far do you have to move your finger between each string. Then try doing this again, while looking away from the harp. Again, you can use the music for this exercise that you will find in the PDF, or you can just close your eyes and go up, check where you are before you start. And then maybe you can go down, also check where you're starting before you close your eyes. You can do the same with the left hand and then hands together to slowly ease into trusting that your hands will do the right thing while you can look away and follow the music. The last step would be practicing playing a simple piece that includes some repeated notes and steps, for example... Do you remember what I said before about the repeated notes, how sometimes you will find them separated by some other notes? Here's exactly that. You start with the middle C, you go up a step, and another one, and then you come back to your middle C. Take that four note section and try practicing it first while looking at what your hand is doing. And then looking away from the strings to follow the notes in the music. Then you can move on to the next section and the next You will find the music to follow in this lesson's PDF. When you play, keep it slow, especially when you get to the third bar. 
You want to have part of your mind feeling how your hand is moving, while the other bit of the mental space is focused on following the music on the page. When you play the whole piece, you don't have to always look away from the string, especially when you get to the bit with the jumps. And that's your jump coming. What is most important is that you can keep following the music on the page and always know in which part of the music you are. I'm curious, how do you find reading music on the harp? What do you find challenging? And which of these tips that you've learned today are you going to try first? If you like this episode, please leave a comment or share it on your social media. Even better, send me your suggestions for future episodes so I can make them even more useful for you. I hope your practice is going well and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching and take care for now. Bye!